of 2024. First of all, thank you for all the love and the support for all the videos I have posted. I'm reading your comments. I'm getting your text messages. Thank you for all the love and support and just getting, just watching them. It really means a lot. But welcome back. If you're new, I got some new subscribers. So welcome to Faith Talk to Miranda. I'm Miranda. Nice to meet you. If you are not a newbie, if you've been here before, if this ain't your first rodeo, welcome back, homie. Welcome back. Welcome back. So today, um, we're going to talk kind of about a lot of stuff, but not at the same time, but it's all going to make sense. So for the month of February, my church back at my second home, I was going to say back at home. It is like my second home. Um, but my church in Michigan, Burning Bush, we were fasting and it was consecration month for the month of February. So all of February, we were fasting, consecration, praying for stuff. They sent scriptures and devotionals for the whole month for us to follow, which is what I love because I love a good itinerary that breaks it down. The what, the when, the where, the why, the who, the how. Love all of that. So I kind of wanted today to kind of talk about what I've learned um, and then just hopefully what I've learned is helpful to you all. So the theme of it was um, the time is now. The time is now. It's time to. That's what my bishop was preaching about. It's time to. So with that being said, a lot of the scriptures were kind of circling around waiting and how hard it is to wait. So one thing I have to say I have noticed about myself is when I started this fast and started the consecration and we did the Daniel fast and all that type of stuff, I learned that I took it more seriously, I think, this time. Um, I fasted with my family before. I fasted. We, they, we fa I fasted with Burning Bush before, but I think in the season that I am in right now, I'm 21, I'm getting older, I'm mature, I'm adulting, I have to make adult decisions, having adult and mature conversations. I feel like I took this fast, in my opinion, a little bit more seriously, and I feel like I have grown so much and my relationship with God has grown a lot stronger um, throughout this process, even as far as like reading the Bible. I am an avid person about reading the Bible, but I really struggle to read the Bible. I really sit down and read it. But I have never read, I mean, in all honesty, I, like, I've read the Bible so much this month, and I'm going to keep it up. Um, but I, I've, I've truly learned so much just about reading his word. And one thing I've also learned is when I do it, so like, for example, they'll send us scriptures for the week and just some stuff to go with the scripture. I read the scripture. I So I have my hand Bible, like my hard copy Bible, and it is a New Living Translation version. After that, I go on my laptop and I, you know, the Bible app or whatever. I read the easy to read version. Then I read the amplified version. Then I read the King James version. So I'm reading the same scripture multiple times and it speaks to me differently every time I read it, but it's still so good, so good. So let's talk about some stuff that I learned. Waiting, who likes to wait? Not me, it's hard. It's so, it's very, very, very hard to wait. Um, but one thing, a big takeaway that I've taken from this is if you hate waiting so much, not hate waiting so much, but people don't like waiting or your waiting season, what I've learned is what are you doing in your waiting season? You have to know that when you're done with your waiting season, God has already promised you something. So you know if it's already promised, then at the end of that waiting season, God's going to pull you through. Um, I really connected to Abraham. I was reading Abraham's story. Oh, I love Abraham. And I was reading it and it made me, I dig so much into this man and his family and his story. I just felt like, I mean, there are a lot of people who had issues with waiting. Job, Moses, Joseph, like a lot of people. But Abraham, I really just kept reading about him and about him and Sarah trying to have a kid. And there was a thing I saw on Instagram and it was, and it was like biblical people. It's like if these many biblical people can wait in the Bible for these many years. Then what you're waiting for that God has already promised you like, you, you, you gotta know it's, it's gonna be worth it. It's gonna be really big. So I, I'm a deep thinker and a very detailed and also like a basic thinker. So like some of the stuff I was learning about is waiting. So what do you do in your waiting season? Waiting and confidence. I have to be confident and have faith and trust in God to know that he's not just putting me in this season just to put me in this season. There's a purpose in this season. There's, a, there's something that I'm going to learn while I'm in this waiting season. So that really stuck out to me. And then um, oh, I wrote it down on here. So if you see me looking down, we're looking at notes. Um, what are you doing um, in your waiting season? And also in your waiting season, that's when God really communicates to you more. Um, and one thing I've learned is sometimes it's not always loud. That might sound basic or people are like, I already know that. But sometimes it may not be like a very beetle, beetle sign when he's communicating to you. 
um, I was reading a scripture and even saying that he will whisper it to you. Something that he's saying to you could even be quite like it's not going to be that loud. That's why I've learned, especially in these times where I'm fasting and I'm praying and I'm reading his word. I really just try to sit sometimes in silence first to just hear him speak and just feel the atmosphere. And then I have some music playing in the background and just like lowering it down. But I just want him to meet me where I am. And then a quote I took from one of the devotionals is seasons of waiting offer countless opportunities to witness God at work. So I feel like we're constantly always waiting for something. But then when that wait is over, you have what you have. It's like, it really wasn't that bad. You're constantly seeing God coming from, coming, coming, God doing stuff for you. And he's coming through for you every single time. So that really got me. Also with what do you do in your waiting process? Don't compromise your waiting process. There are so many distractions in this world that we live in. There are so many distractions that can take you off of your path or what God has promised you, but you can't compromise what he has for you. What God has for you, it is for you. Another thing was waiting may cause you to suffer, but make sure you're still trusting in God. Suffering is, life is not easy. Suffering is, it's not the best thing. It's not the best thing. But one thing I have learned in those moments, I've learned so much about myself, about, about my relationship with God in those moments. Um, I've heard a lot of people say that is that God is when you're struggling or you're in your storm, God is always with you in that storm. He's in there with you. So you have to know you're going to get through it. And then also, I like to look at my receipts. Like when I have my moments, I'd be like, well, I had this moment a couple weeks ago and God did his big one and everything was all right. So what makes me think that what I'm going through right now, he's not going to pull me through the same way. So that's a really good one. And then also while I was doing my devotionals, I also paired it up with this Sadie Robbins devotional book. I totally forgot what it's called, Lord. I feel so bad. But I took it from her and I posted it on all my social medias because it was too good. It was God didn't stop using me because I failed. I um, am still learning to this day that I feel like when I fail or fall in short that he's disappointed in me that he won't I will not be used I just I just feel like I'm not wanted or validated but reading that really just hit me it's, it's very simple but yet so powerful God didn't stop using me because I failed failing is it's gonna happen it's it's part of life it's not gonna be an easy thing but the fact that God can still use you your broken pieces and still use you because that's just life he's still gonna use you so another scripture that was um, in our devotional and it was Lamentations 3 25. However, I'm reading the easy to read version because I really connect more to the easy to read version. So it said the Lord does good things for people who wait for him. He is kind to everyone who looks for him. I read that multiple times reading it down, breaking it down. The Lord does good things for people who wait for him. He is kind to everyone who looks for him. It made me also think of that song. I think it's by Fram. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on. Is it mount up on wings? Lord, forgive me. But it made me thinking about them waiting on the Lord, and that people who wait on the Lord, He does good things for people who wait on Him. So that's kind of it. It was kind of short, kind of simple. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope to help you. I know I have grown. Um, as a person and my relationship with God just throughout this entire month. It has really been so good to me and I've learned so many tips and tricks and tools to do what I'm, how to learn in my waiting season and how to process the waiting process also. But this video is also very, very, very special to me because I was not the only one that was doing fasting, the Daniel Fast, Consecration, the whole thing. I have some of my girls, my sisters, from school we are in a group called friends that pray and i love it it's so much fun and they were also fasting i sent in the group chat i was like hey bernie bush is fasting we're doing consecration all this stuff let me know if you want to do it i sent it to them a lot of them did it so i want to share i wanted them to share with you all some of the stuff they learned um throughout fasting some of it was their first time some stuff they learned some stuff that worked for them didn't work for them because one thing i've learned is as i have been fasting and learning how to fasting looks different for everyone it's not going to be the same fast um and as long i think as long as it's beneficial to you yes there are set guidelines and stuff like that 
But if it's beneficial to you and that it works best for you, you have to do what works best for you because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one getting closer to God throughout this process. So that is it for me. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all. Thank you so much. And now my sisters are going to share with you some stuff they learned throughout their fasting, consecration, all that stuff. Love you all. See you at the next video. Bye. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Bianca. Um, I'm coming to you guys today to talk about my fast that I did in the beginning of February. Um, this all started because of burning bush. So we did like a one week fast of, you know, just clearing out everything and getting used to I don't really know how to explain it but I decided to fast because a lot of stuff been on my mind like I haven't really been too much in tune with Jesus and I felt like that if I fasted then it would bring me more closer to him like just reading my bible you know getting used to unlearning my healthy ways shall I say my journey with the fast was pretty good um, I caught myself in a state of a, t a state of temptation, shall I say? Like uh, I would crave a whole bunch of stuff that I d I didn't eat. Like I felt like a little bit after the fast, um, I felt like I was getting closer to God, and it kind of made me cry. Like once I come to get the week, I could have did the whole month, but I said I'm just gonna do a fast every month for one week. Um, I don't know what my next fast will be for March, but I feel like in this journey, it helped me to like open my eyes a little bit more and just like trust the Lord because I wasn't really trusting with him. So I felt like with the fast, I did what I needed to do. I'm not going to lie. I feel like it helped me it open my eyes and open the door for me. And I actually enjoy fasting with burning bush. Thank you guys. I really enjoyed it. Um, Miranda was very much a big help in this. She kept us motivated in our prayer group, our friends with prayer group chat, you know, sending like little meal, sending meals and stuff like that that we could eat. So it really helped me just knowing that I had God on my side and I had my friends that pray by my side as well, helping me stay focused because I tend to not be consistent with the Lord. And that's my biggest thing because you can't have both. You can't want to be with God and you can't want to live life how you're supposed to live life and honestly i'm choosing god and i do have my days where i'm not consistent but if you keep trying and you keep putting in that effort you will get there and i feel like i got there so thanks my randa for having me hey, uh, my name is dariana and i'm going to be sharing what fasting means to me my experience with it and what did i learn from it so fasting is a time to deny your flesh and help grow spiritually it's time to get closer to God and really learn the importance of leaning on him to get through life. So I've done two types of fasts before. I've done a fruits and veggies fast and then I have done a social media fast. And both were hard in their own way, but with God, I was able to get through them both. So hunger and temptations were really my biggest struggles during the fast. God would tell me that I need to lean on him in order to get through them. Once I got in that word, I wasn't even hungry no more. Once I started praying, that temptation left my body. It's all about prioritizing God and letting him be the source of your strength. Also, when you're fasting, this is a great time for God to be speaking to you. So it's very important to just be still and listen to what he has to say. And that is my experience with fasting. Hey guys, my name is Micah and I just wanted to share my experience on the Daniel Fast this year. So my fast was at the beginning of the year in January. Um, it was a three week fast and it's the Daniel Fast. So I couldn't have any meats. I couldn't have no sweets, no dairy, no no bread products honestly nothing besides fruits and vegetables and like grains and beans and you know things like that so honestly removing all of those things out of my everyday co consumption it was really different for me because i've never really did any type of diet i never was like you know watching what i was eating and so like eliminating those things was kind of hard for me but like the first couple of days, yeah, the first couple of days was very hard. But after that, I was able to, you know, lock in and really focus on why I was doing the fast and not like focus on why I couldn't have the food, you know? So I was able to talk to God more, pray, and I was able to be very intentional about the things that I was praying for. And it was kind of like I was sacrificing something for God and so that he could, you know, give to me in return. And honestly, it was just a great experience. I won't share like 
specifics of like the things that I like, you know, talked to God about, of course, but it was just a great experience. And I would definitely recommend anybody who is looking to, you know, get clarity about a situation, looking to, you know, expand on your relationship or honestly, anybody who is just wanting to grow in their faith to do a fast. I think it is a great thing to participate in especially when you have people who are surrounding you who are also like doing it and encouraging you and like you know supporting you keeping you on chats because my friends are doing it with me and you know we would like check each other like hey you're not supposed to be eating that you're not supposed to be eating that and it was very like it was very fulfilling and wholesome and I am so glad that I participated in it and I would recommend it to anybody who is a Christian and looking to grow in their relationship with God Hey, hey, beautiful people. I'm coming to y'all today to tell y'all about my experience with fasting. Um, I did the Daniel Fast um, mainly, um, and I did the Daniel Fast this past January. I think it was about like three weeks or so. And so when I did the Daniel Fast, um, of course, you know, with the Daniel Fast, you eat um, mainly just fruits and vegetables, whole grains, and then water. Um, so you can't have no fried foods, no soda, um, no sweets, all of that good stuff. And so for me, with my experience with doing it, um, it was very good. I was able to really hone in on my relationship with God, um, and value the importance of doing something uh, strictly for him and to cut out all of my like temptations and stuff like that. Um, it was a challenge for me. It was a challenge because I'm a college student. I go to Eastern Michigan University um, and being a college student and doing a fast and going to different food places that don't really offer as much as far as being able to uh, like eat healthier and only eating fruits and vegetables is very hard. Um, and so that's where for me it came to having my accountability partners which was my um uh, my friends we all did the fast together and i feel like also doing the fast with somebody else is very good in my opinion because it like allows you to have somebody that holds you accountable and so through doing it with my friends i was able to um resist certain temptations like uh being like okay no girl let's go make this um meal or this is something that i ate um that might be helpful for you or I went to this place on campus and they had this food, maybe you should try this. So like us being able to go back and forth and like share what we ate for the day or if we, are, if we were struggling to be like, you know, today just wasn't my day. I didn't, maybe didn't eat as much as I should have or something like that. You know, I just feel like it's good to have those people who will help you through your journey. Um, but overall, I feel like the Daniel Fast is like very important or just fashion in general um, to ensure that you are Honing in on your relationship with God and making sure that you are staying con connected uh, with Him and through the process, I think it's a very important to pray, um, get in your Bible and stuff like that. And so I'm not gonna make my stuff too long, but just wanted to kind of like shed some light on my experience with the day and fast and the benefits of it, the challenges of it, being transparent about that. Um, I hope that through y'all process, y'all are able to strengthen your relationship with God. Um, and things of that sort and so just to be encouraging y'all got this y'all got this um and yes knowing that we all are young and for some people they might be starting off their relationship with god or this might be a new journey for them uh, i think that it's good that my is doing this video to keep people uplifted and so yes hello faith talks with randa viewers my name is charis um and this is how my fast went. Now, I'm gonna try to make this brief, but yet not trying to, I wanna give detail too. So I started my fast on February 1st and everything of that nature. And I believe it ended, I was on it for two weeks. So I believe it ended on um, the 16th or something like that. So I didn't do the whole three weeks. I kind of was iffy on, as far as not, you know, I didn't do like the three weeks I was supposed to be. And I was on a pescatarian diet. So I was still, I ate fish, but I still had no white rice or it was still like the Daniel Fast just with fish. And I'll, not to mention, I was also on a trip during that time. So I left on my trip for on February 5th and I was down there all the way until the 14th, which is Valentine's Day. Um, and basically it was very, 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 
revitalizing for my body. I don't want to give too much TMI, but I literally noticed that my body, body was getting rid of the toxins. It was like my skin was glowing even more. I felt lighter. I felt more like like a human more so you know what i'm saying i can tell that my body was getting also adjusted to the shift but spiritually um i recognized on how the holy spirit was speaking to me and i remember even beforehand i was like holy spirit please please just not saying please but i was like holy spirit if i'm supposed to be on this fast during the vacation please let me know so the whole time i ate the same foods kind of it was irritating at times but the way that the holy spirit spoke to me and gave me my word a lot really a lot of words as far as on like different words like being fruitful fruit has been standing out to me and i also had a whole journal and i was crying and looking at nature when i was in the dominican republic that's where i went and i was like in tears because the Holy Spirit was saying that I want you, you have a gift for the masses. I want you, daughter, to rest in me and to let my waters cleanse you. Allow me to uproot mindsets and to re-posture your heart towards me. So I'm going to put you in situations where you can rely on nothing but my faith. And I'm going to strip you of comfortability and thinking that you have to know it because I want you to be vast and plentiful. You are a seed and a catalyst for many lands and generations to grow. And it's so much more. I feel, you know, so many different things the Holy Spirit was telling me. But him saying, I remember him saying something like as far as with me doing my fast and on vacation and not being also on the social media fast as well um, was very, very it's, I know I meant the lie. I had to really rely on faith to keep me going. So I was just thanking God for who he was speaking to me, how he was speaking to me, for my body being re-cleansed and revitalized. And I, it was just amazing. I can't wait to do it again. I'm going on another social media fast. And I just want to thank Faith Talks with Randa for including me in this video, sharing my story. And I hope that everyone, I encourage everyone to do the Daniel fast, to do a fast of some sort, to not only get closer to the Lord, but to hear him more and to remove distractions that are hindering you from being in the spirit or even hearing the spirit. So thank you. Stay blessed. And shout out to Faith Talks with Randa. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Peace.